Hey everybody, it's Eric here to talk about the season finale of Ahsoka. A little bit later than I wanted to because I am super sick. I apologize. I'll stand back a little bit here. If I sound wonky, that's what's going on. So we're going to talk about the episode and the season as a whole. And uh, at the end, I'll, I'll tell you all about me meeting uh, Pedro Pascal last Wednesday. All right. So this episode, the finale of Ahsoka takes a lot from the Clone Wars cartoon. I'm thinking of Season 4, Episode 19 of the Clone Wars called Massacre, where Grievous attacks Dathomir, and there's witches and zombies and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of magic, so lots going on, uh, reminiscent of that episode. We see Thrawn, he's done loading his cargo, his mysterious cargo. We're never told what the cargo is. What is the cargo? What do you guys think? Is it is that his old crew or soldiers and the witches are going to resurrect all of them? And that'll be his army to attack the Republic? I don't know. Could be. Uh, Thrawn also sends out two TIE fighters, just two, <laughs> side by side to be perfectly hit by Ahsoka's uh, T-6. Is that what her ship's called? If, if he would have sent just three TIE fighters, I think... That would have been a better strategic maneuver. Uh, the witches give Morgan Elsbeth the gift of shadows, um, which is basically eyeshadow, a green fiery sword, and somehow the ability to take on Ahsoka Tano the White. Um, I just, I just didn't buy that Ahsoka. <sighs> Elsbeth should not give Ahsoka much of a fight. Sorry, under any pretense. So. Wasn't really buying that. But uh, yeah, so the witches summon the Blade of Talzin from like another galaxy, right? That's pretty impressive. I know uh, Rey can transport a lightsaber to uh, Kylo, but they're a dyad in the Force. But those witches, they can just like summon a sword from another galaxy. thought that was uh, interesting. Uh, and then we see part eight, the title. What is it called? The Jedi, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? No, the Warlord. So... I saw what you did there, but I, I just didn't like the title. All right, next up, we join those Ninja Turtles, and they're moving way too slow for my liking. I don't know why they just don't get into the T-6, the spaceship, and just fly wherever they got to go. But no, they're going to be a sitting duck. Uh, then we get a nice scene between Professor Hu Yang and Ezra. They talk about lightsabers and Kanan. I like that scene a lot. We also get some backstory uh, about what went bad between Ahsoka and Sabine. Next, we have a scene that I thought was... Cringy at the time between Ahsoka and Sabine, but it makes sense when you think about the last shot of this episode. Basically, Ahsoka says uh, that she'll always be there for Sabine because Anakin was always there for her. Mm -hmm. And when you think of the last shot in this episode, so that, that scene makes more sense. It was still awkward, though. Uh, next, those two TIE fighters show up and they strafe the T-6 and damage the stabilizer. Just in one strafe, these two ships. Earlier in this season, some ships <laughs> strafed the T-6 and hardly did any damage to it in space, but now they damage the stabilizer. Anyway, okay, so Ahsoka and Ezra jump off and then go underneath the ship and, and hold it up with the Force. And I, I, I thought that just looked weird to me. I don't know. I, I think sometimes Dave Filoni is uh, bringing the animation elements of the Clone Wars into live action, and I'm not sure it translates well. Uh, sometimes showing less and doing less means more. Like, the original trilogy, they're the best movies still, and we didn't see Jedi do all these crazy things. Like, it, it seemed more grounded and just... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And then I'm thinking Yoda. Remember Yoda? Like, lifting an X-Wing out of the swamps in Dagobah? Like, he had to, like, concentrate and try, and it's Yoda. And for him to, like, oh, you know, get the X-Wing and... Then he like exhale afterwards, like it was not the easiest thing in the world to do. And but these two are like holding up a massive ship. I don't know. I'm not digging it. Not digging it. Let me know in the comments. Am I off base here? All right. So they hold the ship up, and then uh, Sabine gets it in her head that the only thing she can do is ram the two Tie Fighters. So that's what she's going to do because they're perfectly lined up, and the T6 has got wide wings. Right. Sure. Bang. Problem solved. In fact, uh, she's going to walk out like a badass after crashing the T-6 and say, got him, and Ahsoka's going to smile at her. And I just thought that was odd. All right, next up, Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra are going to assault 
a Star Destroyer and a Witch Castle riding two wolves. I thought it was pretty dumb. And they're going <laughs> to... They're going to go under the Star Destroyer, and Thrawn says, rain hellfire on them, and the Star Destroyer can't hit the two wolves. Uh, Thrawn made a face. He looked frustrated for, for the first time in this series, and I had similar feelings watching this. I just wasn't buying it. Uh, they go right through the front door, use the force, open the door, and they meet the Van Halen uh, stormtroopers. And we find out that the, I, I don't think that the Van Halen stormtroopers were they zombies initially, or are they going to be zombies? Like I couldn't, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Originally, they weren't acting like zombies, so maybe they were like normal people. But uh, they weren't very scary. They were wussy. They couldn't hit anything. There was like fifty of them. They could have easily killed the three Jedi. I mean, just think of Order sixty six, storm in the temple. All it was was Anakin, but like a lot of stormtroopers, and they killed the Jedi. I don't know. I wasn't buying it. So the stormtroopers came off really weak looking. They were, and the action was like, the action looked off. I don't know. Uh, but then the stormtroopers are resurrected, and then they finally start crawling like zombies or walking like zombies. And I like that. When, when they were, I don't know if they were groaning. I can't remember. But when they were kind of coming down the hall like that, I thought that was a cool idea. I'm not sure it was executed very well here, but I thought the idea was kind of cool. And again, that kind of stuff was in the Clone Wars cartoon, the whole zombie thing with these witches. But um, And then Thrawn's going to tell Morgan Elsbeth, hey, uh, thanks for everything, but you're going to stay behind, you, you <laughs> right, for the Empire. And then uh, he walks away and she whispers for Dathomir. So I like that because I think the witches have their own agenda. I think Thrawn has his own agenda. They're just using each other. So that's kind of cool. I wish I knew more about what the hell everybody wanted here. We're not going to get much of that, but I don't know. Uh, and then Ahsoka's going to fight Elsbeth alone, and I'm sorry, there's just no way Elsbeth could hold her own against Ahsoka Tana, uh, the White. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So I, I wasn't engaged in that fight at all. Uh, but Sabine and Ezra, they're going to fight two zombie death troopers. Now, I thought these guys were kind of cool. I, wasn't it Sabine, like, shooting the one in the face, and his helmet is, like, getting all broken up, and you could see, like, the zombie jaw? That was good. That was cool. Give me more of that. Like, I think those other stormtroopers, like, parts of their helmets should go away, and there could be, like, zombies, bodies underneath them. Like, ramp it up a little bit. Let's go Walking Dead here. I mean, get, you know. Get, yeah. Hmm. yeah, if they would have went a little bit further... Then we would have seen on the uh, you know the sideshow website the new hot toy for the zombie stormtrooper would have been up for pre-order today, but it wasn't. So, hmm. um, but I do like how the Romero rules apply. You know, you have to shoot the zombies in the head or cut off their head to kill them. So, yeah, I mean this was a good idea, but I'm not sure it was executed very well. All right, so Sabine is going to help Ezra get aboard the Chimera with a force assist. I thought that was fine. Uh, we think Sabine's going to do the same thing, jump on the Chimera, but she does not. She stays behind to help Ahsoka because Ahsoka is getting her ass beat by Morgan Elsbeth. And I'm sorry, people, I wasn't buying it. I, there's no way that can happen. And um, so, yeah, I didn't like that fight at all. I thought that was lame. They're going to beat Elsbeth anyway. And then they're both going to jump off the platform like Marty McFly did in Back to the Future 2, only to rise up again because they landed on the ship. They try to catch Thrawn, but Thrawn's going to get away. He's going to get away and jump off into hyperspace. So Ahsoka and Sabine are, are left to live with the Ninja Turtles. Uh, and then we have this scene with Ezra, which I thought just didn't make any sense. Tried to create drama or suspense and failed miserably. So we see Ezra... Land in, inside a rebel ship. Uh, he's arriving in his Imperial shuttle. Lands, and all the rebels got their guns pointed um, at the ship. Hera's there. She's got a gun or something pointed at the ship. And you get a great Hera butt shot, though, by the way. One of the better ones uh, from the season. So that's exciting. Uh, and then uh, Ezra comes out of the ship in full Stormtrooper gear, including a Stormtrooper helmet. And then I guess Chopper goes up and says, because I guess Chopper knows it's Ezra, I guess. And then finally Ezra takes off the helmet and they're all like, oh, you know, it's, it's Ezra. 
I mean, wouldn't Ezra, when he's approaching the Rebel fleet in an Imperial shuttle, say, hey, this is Ezra, I'm not an Imperial, don't shoot, and by the way, can I, like, land somewhere? Yeah, you can land here. Uh, hey, Ezra, this is Hera. Oh, my God, I can't believe you're back. Oh, hey, Hera, yeah, this is Ezra. I'm, I'm so happy to be back. And then wouldn't Ezra just, like, land and then come out in normal Ezra clothes and, like, hug Hera? <sighs> Like, why are you creating all this bullshit tension that doesn't work? Uh, uh, and then we finally see Darth Hottie and Darth Stevenson. And that's when you go, you know, I feel ripped off by this episode. And kind of this season. Because, well, see, we'll see Darth Hottie, and I guess she's going to be befriend these bandits. And then we see Darth Stevenson... Uh, it looks like he's standing on the Argonath from Lord of the Rings, looking at Mount Doom in the distance. Uh, I think he's standing on a statue. Is that the, the father from Mortis, actually? I think that could be. That would be cool if that's who that is. I don't know what the Mount Doom thing is. But see, this is what I want to learn more about. Like, this is a character I really cared about. You know? Darth Stevenson. So... Ah, like, I'm just so frustrated. This is what I want to know about. And then the show ends, and we're never going to... I mean, do you recast Ray Stevenson? And and who would you recast in this role? Uh, let me know in the comments. Like, if you're going to recast Darth Stevenson, like, who would play the character? I can't think of anybody. But that was interesting. I want more of that. But I'm not going to get it. That sucks. Uh, we see Thrawn arrive on uh, Dathomir with his mysterious cargo, which we still don't know what that is. And uh, I like how uh, Ahsoka and Sabine, uh, they're looking out into space, and I think what uh, Sabine says, she sees uh, shadows in the starlight. And I'm thinking, is, is the, the whales are back? Could that be the whales? And then we see uh, at the very, very end, Force Ghost Anakin Skywalker, Hayden Christensen. And I liked that a lot. I thought that was really, really cool. And I'm thinking, so in Ahsoka Season 2, like, are we going to get, like, Anakin showing up periodically? I thought that, I think that'd be cool. What do you guys think? I'd like to see that. All right, Season 1 of Ahsoka. It's in the books. What did I think? I thought it was okay. Okay. I thought there were some bad moments. Um, and I thought there were some good moments. I think it did uh, move along unnecessarily slow. It took a lot of time to kind of get going. Uh, but I thought the finale was kind of frustrating and disappointing because of so many loose ends. And really, we don't completely know, even after watching eight hours of this, what's everybody's goal? What's their motive? So I, I do like the characters. I think this is a cast you can work with. But I think they need to pick up the pace Tell a story here. I, I, don't, I don't sense a lot of storytelling. Uh, we're watching these people kind of plod along. And the action, you know, I, I just think the original trilogy wasn't, they weren't action movies. They, they were telling a story. So I think Star Wars needs to go back to that a little bit. Like, tell a good story. Uh, I, I just don't, uh, this Jedi fighting Stormtrooper action is kind of, getting a little tiresome, at least for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know. But it was all right. Uh, I'm looking forward to a season two, but it really sucks that Ray Stevenson passed away. That sucks. All right. So last Wednesday, I met Pedro Pascal at Halloween Horror Nights. So I'm at the Last of Us house, and we're waiting to get in. We're at the door. And on my right appears a rest in peace tour with the guide with the little flashlight. And a young lady from that group uh, has her picture taken with a guy, and behind them would be the Last of Us sign. And uh, the guy got my attention at this point because he was wearing like jeans and a denim jacket and boots at Halloween Horror Nights. No one would dare wear that when you got to cover 10 houses uh, in 90 degree heat. So I'm looking at this guy, and he turns, and I'm like, holy shit, that's Pedro Pascal. And then he turns and, and looks me right in the eye, and I say, hi, Mr. Pascal. 
It's all I could come up with. And he keeps eye contact. Is like, and like he was like all smiley and happy, saying something to me. I couldn't make it out. And then he's like going to like the girl here and here, and there's a lot of excitement. And then the, the, I think the guide goes, "This is your house, Pedro," and um, and I'm just like, I'm more stunned at this point. Like, what is going on here? Like, I'm at I'm at the house, and Pedro Pascal's here. Like, what is going on? Like, it just seems like a bizarre uh, event. It, it wasn't making sense to me. I was kind of stunned. Um, but they go, and then we follow his group, and then we do the house. The house was kind of, eh. and when we came out. I had every opportunity to bother him, and I, I, but I'm like, what? Uh, be an annoying YouTuber and get my camera out. Or, I, I didn't. Uh, he, he was just um, a very positive person. Uh, There's a lot of good energy coming from him, and so when he was, when we were there for like a minute, just kind of like it was good vibes. So the last thing I wanted to do was like whip out a camera. And, and start taping shit, like, because no one was doing that, everyone was just being cool, I didn't want to be that guy, you know, um, and so, yeah, I mean, once you see Pedro Pascal, I was convinced, I'm like, that's, and then I heard, it's, it's Pedro Pascal, right, um, and then a couple days later, on like a Disney site, uh, people did take his picture, and that's what I used for my little uh, uh, artist rendition of my little thumbnail, I kind of took that piece out there and used it there, but yeah, I didn't want to bother him or anything like that, he was cool, he said something to me, I have no idea what he said, but he was an extremely happy, positive person, I gotta respect that, and now I feel bad, I was a little bit hard on him, I was never hard on him, but I was a little hard on the, the Last of Us series, but um, anyway, all right, so that's my Pedro Pascal story, I am sorry that I'm very sick, but I did get through this for you guys, and uh, I don't know, are we going to talk about Loki? I hope I'm better, and maybe I can talk about Loki soon. So anyway, thanks, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought about any of this. I always appreciate it. I will see you soon, and there's no way I'm going to do my, uh, you know, my outro. I'm just going to say I'll see you soon, and I'll see you on the new. Thank you.